Hello everyone, welcome to another Monday movie, I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week's topic is, is rather straightforward. We're going to be looking at how you can use the look at constraint and the path constraint in order to create a piston rig, in order to have two objects looking at each other and moving in and out as if they were, uh, you know, a, a piston or hydraulics. It's a great effect and it's a huge time saver. You're going to love it. So let's have a look. I've created these objects here. Um, there's currently no linking between them. So I'm going to do everything for you right here. There's nothing special. First things first, we're going to need some dummy objects. I like to keep things as clean as I can. So I'm going to go to my create panel. I'm going to go to helpers. Under the standard group, I'm going to pick dummy. And I'm going to create a dummy. Just click drag. Now this dummy, I'm going to align it to this first cylinder right here. Align tool, click. Looks good, OK. I'm going to hold down Shift and I'm going to drag. I'm going to create another one. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to align it. This time I use the Alt-A hotkey. OK, so now we've got two dummies and they're perfectly aligned with the cylinders over which these two objects are going to pivot which is an important thing to note. The pivot point of this, of these two cylinders right here and the pivot point of this box is identical to the helper so that I can rotate it like this. Same goes for the other one. And this is important because these two objects are going to be pivoting over these cylinders. Okay, next step. We need to link these objects together so that when one moves, the other ones move with it. So I'm going to click on Select and Link. And I want to link this box to the dummy. I want to link the cylinder to the dummy. And I'm just doing click drag. So I'm going to select this one here, same thing. Connect it to the dummy. Connect to the dummy. So now whenever I move these dummies, the other objects are going to follow along in that group. All right, we're on the right track. What we need now is for these two objects to look at each other so that they can so that when their their parent moves, they'll continue looking at each other and make it look like there's a piston there. So I'm going to select my two cylinders right here. And I'm going to go animation constraints look at constraint now these are actually pretty complicated constraints so I'm not going to go into all the detail that you see here but I will tell you what's most important to make this work notice that there's a view line right here and that shows what it's looking at or where it's trying to look but it's on the wrong axis right it's as if this is the front of the object and it's not we want this top area to be the front so right here where it says select look at axis I'm gonna start kinda of going through here no it's not the y-axis it's the z-axis. There we go. And now it's looking in the right direction. We can run a quick test to make sure this worked by moving around our dummy. And you'll notice that it now takes over the rotation of these two cylinders and makes sure that they're always looking at the other, the other pivot. Let's do the same thing for the other part of the piston. Animation. Constraints. Look at constraint. Same thing, looking at the other dummy. Just like before, it's using the wrong face, so I'm just going to select Z. And now these two objects are facing each other, no matter what. Now, of course, we still need to be able to regulate the distance that these two nodes can be apart. If they're too close, they intersect. And if they're too far away, it just looks silly. So what I'm going to have to do here is use that path constraint that I mentioned earlier. Having selected this dummy, I'm going to go to Animation, Constraints, Path Constraint. And I'm going to click on the ellipse, uh, the ellipse spline that I've created here. And now, this dummy can never be too far or too close to the other part of the piston. Neat trick, huh? And you can use this in a lot of places. And this idea extends much farther than just creating pistons for mechanical characters or you know machinery. 
try to use this whenever you can because it can abstract away the simple movements, the simple adjustments that you need to make to what you're working on and it lets you really focus on things like posing your character. So until next week I encourage you to think about using things like this like the path constraint and like the look at constraint and all the other animation constraints in your work. They can be pretty helpful. Stay tuned. Next week we're going to have another Monday movie for you. Until then, take care and happy modeling.